this pivot that I'm going to reseed into alfalfa and brome. I was hoping that I could just harrow it and it would work, but the weeds really came in this last week, so I had my brother Justin spray it out with the helicopter, and then now I'm redisking it up. Um, got my triple mower tractor, which is 300 horse on just this 12 foot disc. It's a little bit overkill, but it has GPS guidance. So once you use that, it's hard to go back to something without it. So we'll get this disc up once and then harrow it twice, and I think it'll be in good shape to blow the seed on. This will be a day or two project doing this 80 acres with just this little disc. but get in shape for seed by the end of the week. Much weed. You can see all the weeds that came in. It was pretty much weed free when I harrowed it a week ago and then got some rain and heat and the weeds and grass really came in. But one pass with the disc works it up pretty nice. Uh, it's really good soil over here. I thought it might be rocky on this hill and rough ground but it's uh, Good black dirt. There's just a little bit of rock on some ridges. I'm trying to get uh, the contractor to finish leveling up these this dirt that we hauled in to fill in some draws. It's still wet and mucky, so we're trying to get it done. And this is yeah, this is twelve foot offset this. I mentioned that this tractor has GPS guidance. And some of you might not know what that is, and I'm not much of a farmer, but a lot of people know more about this than me, but it, uh, it's a system that's on this tractor that uses GPS signal to get its location and basically drive itself. So I just set the width of the disc or whatever I'm pulling and the parameters of it and then I mainly use A, B lines, so I just start on one side and let it drive a straight line to the other, and then it automatically offsets and moves you over on every pass, so you go completely straight and don't get any overlap, so it makes it more efficient. You can see there's a pass over there, and then I'm over two passes, so then I just move. I have to turn the tractor at the end, push the button, and then it finds its line and drives straight to the other side, and I'll turn around and do it again. Um, I have it on this tractor because I have a triple mower that I hay with that's 29 feet wide, so we almost had to get it on this tractor to make it efficient at haying so we weren't skipping or overlapping too much. Just disking away here. This is a McCormick X8. Uh, there's Topcon guidance. I don't really know how to work all the features, but I know how to set the width and make it drive itself back and forth. Just disking this ground up. It's kind of tricky to get this disc set up level for this bigger tractor and then program the GPS because it's got like a 8 inch off set so it's not, it doesn't just pull straight behind you. So it took me a while to get that entered into the GPS and figured out but now it's pulling pretty straight with not much overlap. tractor I just have it on eco settings so it just uses the power required so it's just idling along at like 1200 rpms and barely ever bumps up so it should be pretty efficient not burning a lot of fuel I'm going about five and a half miles an hour I think is what we're at yeah five six
So here's some packages that arrived. We're gonna be getting a lot of packages over the next week or two for an exciting project that we're doing. Stay tuned and I'll update you on how it's going and fill you in on the details. The contractor that I hired to haul the fill and level it in the field was having a hard time finding anyone to run the cat to get it smoothed out and I needed it level so I could disc it for seed so I just got on his cat and spent about a day leveling all the piles out I made the field smooth and got rid of some rough draws that were hard to hay through here you just put boards and stuff across it and it washed out didn't seal so we're gonna put some of these good head gates in get some fill with the tractor to level up the bottom to set the culvert on then we'll back fill it we'll have a nice head gate that'll seal off tight to turn the irrigation water a different direction one of the head gates we put in it stops the main ditch which goes on by and it'll kick it down this <clears throat> outlet ditch that we can irrigate out of and it's just a metal chunk of metal with a handle and you can pull it up let the water out or push it down and it stops the flow Couple of the finished head gates that are all installed in the ditches. Starting to hold water. Gonna dam it up and then send it down this ditch this way. So we're almost entirely flood irrigation in Avon and Helmville. All out of creeks. Some of it has reservoir storage. And then in Deer Lodge is all sprinkler, so two pivots and a wheel line. Got done harrowing it all level. It's all ready for seed to be blown on tomorrow. Gonna put it back to just straight triticale. My plans changed with all the weeds and stuff. We decided we'd do triticale and then spray some 2,4-D and end of June, first part of July to kill another flush of weeds. And I think I'll drill in my alfalfa and grass in middle of July or so after I cut the triticale off. And then hopefully that'll work. But plans might change again, but at least it's farmed up and ready for seed. We'll harrow it and roll it once they blow the seed on, and then it should be good to turn the pivot on and let it start growing. Okay. So some of our ditches have head gates in them, but the majority we use canvas dams to divert the water out of the main ditch. 
So you set it in there. It's on a pole or a pipe. Set it in with some rocks and your shovel. And the water flows down the ditch from the last set. And we'll dam up and fill this canvas and then run out the outlets. So we're up at Snowshoe here. The creek starts up the head of that draw there and is fed by springs and snow runoff. And then you have a diversion out of the creek into these ditches and then dam it up and flood irrigate. So flood irrigation, they claim isn't as efficient in the delivery as sprinklers but it fills the groundwater way better and recharges the aquifers and springs. So then you have water later into the season where sprinklers a lot of times and all the time will just irrigate the surface, which keeps your crop or hay going, but it doesn't get down into the groundwater and recharge that. So flood irrigation has a good purpose, especially in the upper foothills and, and valleys to recharge the groundwater so that the streams and rivers have water later into the dry season in August and September.